All right, folks, welcome to yet another section of Informatica Cloud Tech Tuesdays. Today we have an extremely exciting topic to talk to you about, and we're going to talk about Hadoop, specifically the Cloudera distribution of Hadoop and how you can integrate it using a cloud integration service like Informatica Cloud. With me today in the call, we have Prem Kumar Somakumar, the head of our cloud labs, and we also have Padmaraj Balakrishnan, who actually helped build the Cloudera Hadoop connector for use uh, with Informatica Cloud. So on today's agenda, we're going to go ha and have a brief overview over what exactly Hadoop is, uh, what the Hadoop ecosystem looks like, how you would use Informatica Cloud within the Hadoop architecture, and then we'll get into the demo as to how you would use this with Informatica Cloud. Then we'll have a summary of our various learnings and uh, go into a Q&A as well as talk about Next Tech Tuesdays. So let's talk about what exactly Hadoop is. Now, Hadoop's been around for the better part of uh, half a decade, well over half a decade now, and it really came out of an open source project that was based on Google Map Reduce as well as a Google file system. Some of the key components of uh, Hadoop and key concepts are that you can distribute data as is initially stored in the system. What that means is, if you have individual nodes, you can work on the data that's local to those specific nodes. And any application is lit, written in a high-level language, similar to Java. That way you don't have to worry about any network programming details or how uh, those network components would depend on uh, further downstream connections. Now, the other concept uh, behind Hadoop and the reason why you can actually have such scalable volumes of data processing is because the nodes talk to each other as little as possible. As a written, uh, as a uh, as a result, there's no code written to communicate between these different nodes, and the shared nothing architecture is why all the flavors of Hadoop can scale so well. Now that we've talked about what Hadoop consists of, the history of Hadoop. Let's go into some of the different flavors of the Hadoop ecosystem. So what you see here is just a sampling. If you go to the Apache uh, Foundation website, you'll see new Hadoop projects cropping up uh, pretty much on a periodic basis. But what you see here are some of the more popular flavors of Hadoop and what they're used for. So at the very base layer, we have HDFS, which is unstructured storage. Uh, then on top of that, you have MapReduce, which is used for raw processing. If you want to do any sort of real-time querying, you have HBase. And if you want to have some sort of system management options, such as collecting log files or analyzing your data, you can use Chukwa or Flume. If you want to coordinate your, your various Hadoop jobs, uh, you have Uzi. And on top of that, you have various other uh, flavors of Hadoop uh, for querying. So let's talk about the Informatica Cloud architecture. Now, many of you that are Informatica Cloud customers are very familiar uh, with the Vibe Secure Agent. But I just want to go through it again because we need to talk about where you would put the secure agent with a Hadoop uh, deployment. So as most of you know, uh, you would download the Informatica Cloud Secure Agent behind your firewall and uh, normally on um, some sort of server, and then you finish your workflows, and then you execute those workflows at runtime. Now, as far as where the Informatica Cloud Secure Agent would fit within a Hadoop architecture, let's look at uh, Hive, for instance. So if you look at Hive, you have uh, at the client layer, you have Thrift, uh, you have JDBC, and you have ODBC. And the very services provided are through a um, CLI, Hive server, or even the web interface, which all goes into a driver and which then interacts with either the job client, the file system, as well as the meta store, and that goes into your Hadoop cluster. Now, what the Informatic Cloud Secure Agent does is it interacts through the JDBC driver. So if you want to use Informatica Cloud to integrate data with uh, a Hadoop deployment, uh, what you have to make sure is that the secure agent is on the same uh, cluster as the client 
and how it's going to be interacting is to the JDBC driver. So with that, I'm now going to pass the ball over to Padmaraj Balakrishnan from our Cloud Labs team, and he's going to go through a demo. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, part of the Informatica Cloud Labs team. Uh, I, the Hadoop connector has been one of the most interesting components that uh, we've worked on in the Informatica Cloud. So uh, the demo uh, that we're going to give you is uh, essentially uh, can be divided into a couple of uh, parts. The first one is uh, we, we'll try to load, uh, we'll try to fetch data from Cloudera Hadoop uh, using uh, the Cloudera Impala onto a flat file. And uh, as part of the second uh, uh, you know, DSS task, we would be loading data from a flat file back to Cloudera Hadoop. Let me start off by uh, just giving you an intro on uh, how the you know the ecosystem of the uh, Cloud Hadoop looks like. So, as we see in, uh, on the screen, we have uh, now Cloud Hadoop 4.421 uh, that's installed in, in pseudo distributed mode. This just means that Hadoop is running on a single node at the moment. And uh, what we, uh, we just, I'll just uh, fire off the Impala shell. The Impala shell is pretty similar to any uh, you know, uh, any RDBS MS client, if, uh, no, uh, and uh, Impala will also come with its own schema. So as a start, we'll, let me show the different uh, tables in the schema. So we have a bunch of tables here, and uh, we've set up a table called Hadoop Demo Tweets just for the purpose of this demo. Yes, so what you're seeing the black screen is about the Hadoop, you know, it's just the Hadoop utility that uh, Padma is running right now. Okay, uh, the Hadoop demo tweets table is pretty much similar to, uh, you know, uh, Twitter uh, or the tweets and Twitter, just to, uh, just meant uh, with a simplistic view to hold the user ID as well as tweets. And what we've done as a start is we have loaded about 10,000 uh, tweets for the purpose of this demo. Okay. Uh, let us see how the Informatica Cloud connects to this Cloudera instance. So, so this is the Cloudera connection that I'm showing you. At a very high level, uh, the Informatica Cloud, uh, as, as we all know, uses an agent. The agent uh, needs to be uh, now, uh, as part of uh, one of the Hadoop client nodes. Uh, there are, uh, the, we have the schema, the username password, that's for the Impala schema. We are using uh, a JDBC driver for Impala, so uh, the JDBC connection URL follows. Uh, Impala does have different uh, security uh, mechanisms that are supported, and uh, as a start, just for you know, just to provide a simplistic view, we have just put no SASL as the auth. The driver is the JDBC driver. An important connection parameter that uh, that perhaps is, uh, you know has severe performance implications is the commit interval. This is not for uh, this connection parameter uh, is not really meant for reads. It's more uh, uh, an aspect of writes. So commit interval uh, affects the batch size of or uh, batch size of load into Hadoop using Hive. We have uh, four important configuration or installation paths, which are now uh, the same connector can uh, talk to Hadoop, uh, the components it can talk to, you know, uh, HDFS directly. Uh, at the moment, you know, that's work in progress, but more importantly, uh, it can talk to Hive and Impala. Uh, and all we need to do here is just give the path of uh, the uh, Impala or the Hive libraries. We, uh, we also have uh, you know, a miscellaneous class library path. This is, uh, just, this is for uh, essentially for uh, futuristic purposes, where if we have any new component of Hadoop coming in, we should, uh, you know, this this 
parameter will come into play. So let me quickly go on to how uh, uh, a sample DSS task could be set up. So here uh, we have uh, a task which uses the connection as the source, the Impala connection as source. Okay. So this is just a preview of the uh, Hadoop tweets table. We can also see the different uh, tables that are there in the Impala schema this kind of mimics the metadata that we see there. So, so as a next step, we just, what we've done is we've just chosen a, a local flat file in the file system within, uh, you know, within where the agent is running. And the idea is to have uh, you know the data loaded onto the flat file there. As far as data filters are concerned, any field that is in Impala or any field that is in Hadoop uh, is actually filterable. So here we could see that uh, the filter by options show up both the columns that are there in the table. As far as field mapping goes, uh, we just map both the fields. We really don't have any uh, transformation, but you know all the transformations that are supported in the cloud are supported here. Let me quickly run this task to see you know, where we go from here. Okay, uh, just as we ran this task, uh, uh, we had uh, we could fetch about uh, 10,000 records uh, within eight seconds. Uh, a couple of other uh, aspects that I wanted to uh, you know, throw some more light on. We support Cloudera Impala for the reason that uh, Impala supports real-time queries uh, as opposed to Hive, which is more of a map MapReduce. Uh, you know, which uh, uses a MapReduce mechanism. And uh, another aspect is Impala is about 40 to 45 times faster than uh, Hive on an average, uh, you know, uh, assume uh, if used in, in the right way, which means if this, you know, if the schema is designed the right way and so on and so forth. So uh, this is as far as fetch is concerned. Now, uh, the second part of the demo, uh, let me quickly just run through a task where we uh, uh, let me fire a task that inserts a flat file you know it's about 10,000 records from uh, a flat file onto Hadoop. So here let us quickly check the current so here uh, we'd be using Hive to load data onto Hadoop and let us quickly see uh, the ecosystem that uh, the different the schemas the tables and so on so our the table that we are interested in is a table called tweets and the current uh, in our count and tweets is uh, quickly check that. This is what I was talking to you about when I said that uh, Hive uses MapReduce and you can actually see uh, you know, that MapReduce is not really suited for real-time queries like you know, fetching, getting a count or a normal query as well based on filters. Okay, so It has a count of 90450. Let us quickly fire this task. So 
let me use this time to uh, explain about uh, the DSS task that is running. So if you see here, uh, we just uh, the source is actually uh, uh, a flat file connection that uh, that's meant to read data from a flat file. The target is uh, is a Hadoop connection that's similar to what we saw for the Cloudera Impala. We really don't have any filters as such. It's pretty similar to the query, except that uh, you know, it's the the source is uh, a flat file, and the target is Hadoop. So one aspect uh, that uh, I, I need to stress upon here is that uh, it is exactly for insert that the connector or the Informatica agent as such needs to reside on one of the Hadoop client nodes within the Hadoop cluster. This is because we would be loading uh, you know, uh, data locally. We'd actually be creating temp temporary files and loading data locally. This is one of the requirements uh, for Hive. Another aspect that uh, that is of importance here is uh, the connection parameter uh, could come into it. Let me probably stress on that again. Uh, is, it's quite important for load. So here we see uh, you know a couple of points uh, that we need to uh, remember. The commit interval needs to be uh, needs to be set, and it it's probably needs to be optimized. Uh, it the higher the better, uh, given memory, uh, but. Uh, it, uh, we also have to have a trade-off uh, with uh, the available memory in, in the particular Hadoop client node. So commit interval is very similar to, you, you can, uh, you know, probably an alternate name would be insert batch size. It is just that we are inserting records into Hadoop uh, in batches of 10,000 if the commit interval is 10,000. So as a start uh, on a real, say, uh, Hadoop cluster with the you know, with a few hundred nodes, I would probably start off with a commit interval of say two million or three million, and then uh, monitor memory very well to finally arrive at the optimal value. So that part we've set the you know the high installation path here and the Hadoop installation path as well. So each uh, the installation paths are important given that uh, the connector is loosely coupled to Hadoop. All it does is it uses these installation paths to load the Hadoop libraries onto memory dynamically. So uh, we just saw that uh, you know, we have these 10,000 records that were uh, inserted successfully to uh, onto Hadoop. And uh, just to confirm this, uh, let's probably just run a quick query. So, so you can see this, right? So even for a single statement like select count star from a particular table, uh, Hadoop does or Hive does all these, you know, different MapReduce jobs just to get the count. So that's what you see behind the scenes. And uh, you know we have. Yeah, you know, that's one of the particular reasons that uh, we support Cloudera Impala. That's more real time, and you probably see, uh, you know, for the same data set, Impala would probably. Uh, take less than about uh, a second. So, uh, you know, uh, we've kind of accomplished both the tasks that we intended to demo, and probably uh, i hand it back to you, Ashwin. All right, folks, so what you saw was a demo by 
Padmaraj Balakrishnan of our Cloud Labs team, uh, basically going over how you integrate with Cloudera and Hadoop. Now, I know Hadoop is a little bit of a complex area, so if you have any questions around what you just saw, please type it in the chat panel, and we'll get to it in the Q&A session. So let's look at some of the Tech Tuesday tips for success. If you're integrating with Cloudera, Hadoop, uh, either Impala or Hive versions of it, and um, you want to use Informatica Cloud for that purpose. So the first tip is, if you're extracting data out of Cloudera Hadoop, use Impala instead of Hive. Also, make sure that the Vive Secure Agent, so this is the architecture diagram I showed earlier on, ensure that that resides in the same client node as your Hive or Impala deployment. Also, make sure that you have a high commit interval when inserting data into Hadoop. As well, uh, you saw Padmaraj uh, running some command line interfaces in between. Make sure you use the last runtime command to load data incrementally. And the reason for this is because it helps to split a lot of the high volume tasks into manageable chunks. Also, make sure that when you're incrementally loading data, that those loads are high volume. So let's look at an example of this. Let's say you're loading 600,000 records every hour. Now that yields much better performance than if you were to, use, to load 100,000 records every 10 minutes. So with that, uh, let's go into the Q&A session. And uh, so the first question that's here, either uh, Padma or Prem, uh, what kinds of uh, uh, Hadoop, uh, I guess, flavors are supported? And what components of them are supported, rather? Yeah. Uh, as of now, uh, we support uh, Hive as well as Impala. We support both read and write for Hive, and uh, for obvious reasons, for querying purposes, we use Impala. So, uh, these are the two components that are supported at the moment. Okay. And then um, the other question here is around the commit interval. Now, you showed in your demo how to set the commit interval and uh, the kinds of uh, levels to set it at. So I guess a two-part question. What is the significance of setting this commit interval, and are there any best practices around what this commit interval should be? Yeah, okay. Let me answer it part by part. Uh, so uh, the Hadoop data insert is essentially a batch load process. For example, uh, if I were to uh, have a, you know, a million as a commit interval, one million records would be loaded per batch. So it's advisable to have a commit interval to improve performance. Uh, it, and uh, specifically, it would be it is advisable to have uh, a higher commit interval to improve performance. but as I uh, stressed upon in the demo, this has to be traded off with the available RAM. So uh, I would probably start off with a high commit interval, uh, monitor my RAM well, and then arrive at the optimal value. This is essentially an uh, empirical process. Okay, great. Uh, there's a question here about uh, security. So uh, one of our attendees is using Cloudera Impala and is asking about uh, whether security is first of all supported, and uh, what what kinds of security for Impala are supported? So, if you'd add some color to that. So, uh, we essentially use the Impala JDBC driver. Uh, the Impala JDBC driver, as of now, version 1.0, supports uh, you know, the different uh, kinds of security that Impala supports. For for example, Kerberos as a start. So uh, the place the placeholder for this would really be the JDBC URL, where uh, okay. auth is one of the parameters of the URL. Okay, great. And uh, we are running a little bit over time, so I'll just take one last question. So uh, the question here is about the secure agent and where that fits in the architecture, and uh, whether there's a reason why it needs to be on the client node. Yeah. So, uh, as far as uh, you know, 
we recommend that the secure a agent needs to be on the client node uh, uh, for a couple of reasons. The first reason is uh, if we were to use, uh, you know, if we were to load data into Hadoop using Hive uh, that we are doing right now, uh, this is essentially mandatory because the Hive file, uh, uh, you know, Hive doesn't understand any file system other than uh, the local file system. Uh, and for querying purposes as well, uh, you know, although it's not mandatory, we still recommend uh, using the client node. This is again for a couple of reasons. The first one is uh, uh, we could there is no there won't be any duplication of libraries. All all that uh, the uh, you know uh, the task developer has to do is point to the different installation paths of Hive and Impala and so on and so forth. And secondly, uh, this would also uh, you know uh, avoid any issues, any comms issues or network bottleneck issues and so on and so forth, given high data volume. Okay, all right, great. That explains that. So um, uh, there are some more detailed questions, but we don't have enough time to get to it, folks. So we will respond to you uh, over email, or uh, if you could better yet, just post your questions in the community. Uh, that way, more people can benefit from the answer. So let's talk about some of the next steps. The first thing to do is to read documentation on the Hadoop connector. So there's a link for you on the Informatica Community website. Also, if you want to get started with trying out the Cloudera Hadoop connector, if you go onto the Informatica Marketplace and search for Cloudera Hadoop, you should come up to the listing and then just uh, deploy that into your Informatica Cloud account. Now our next session on October 22nd for Tech Tuesdays is integrating with Oracle eBusiness Suite. Now back in September at Oracle Open World, we announced our native cloud connector for Oracle eBusiness. So we're going, go, we're going to go over how we can use this connector in various integration scenarios. So we hope to see you next week for that Tech Tuesdays, and thank you for joining us this time. Take care.